Yo, what is going on ladies and gentlemen? It is your boy Lamsey back again with another video and today I'm bringing you guys my predictions of the group stage of the UEFA Champions League. Now as you would have known, we had the draw earlier on today or yesterday, whenever I've posted this video obviously. It's going to be different because I'm obviously living in Australia, but I thought, fuck it, I want to do my predictions of who's going to go through to the knockout rounds and who's going to drop through to the Europa League. So, either or, guys, I just want to let you know I'm not a Juventus supporter. I'm, I just really like the um, the crew neck sweater or training jumper. It's obviously a few years old because it's got the uh, old Juventus logo, but yeah, I'm going to get straight into it. Um, if you do like this video, please drop a like, please subscribe, and let's just jump straight into it. So group A, this is a pretty decent group to be honest. Obviously I've got on top PSG and then second we got Real Madrid. Now I just genuinely believe that PSG are going to top the group stage just due to the fact that Real Madrid can't get their shit together. They've got a shit ton of injuries and obviously they've got some players that are going to be out for quite a while and honestly I think it's going to take a couple of years for Real Madrid to you know get their groove back obviously the whole expectation of Real Madrid being one of the best teams in the world and obviously they've got the players to do that but they've got to be on the right game plan and I think it's going to take maybe a year or two for Zidane to get his game plan working with all these young players but I feel like PSG this could be the one time that they can sort of do well in the group stage get a little bit bit of confidence and then hopefully well, well actually not I don't really hope but they'll probably go through and you know get knocked out in the quarterfinals or something but yeah I'm not a massive fan of PSG honestly I love their fashion range and I love their players but as a club and everything I'm just yeah I'm not really phased too much obviously in the third spot I've got Galatasaray um, I don't really know too much about Bruges but I know Galatasaray have a number of decent players so I feel like they will drop through to the Europa League so uh, so that's Group A in a nutshell. So Group B, it was pretty much really easy to choose the two teams that are going to go through to the next stage of the Champions League. And honestly, the Europa League spot was pretty much easy as well. It's just pretty much where I wanted to place, you know, the first seed and the second seed. But I've picked Bayern Munich as the first seed. They've actually started pretty strong in Bundesliga, even though that they've only won one game. But obviously, I just genuinely think that Bayern Munich are a better side than Tottenham at the moment. Tottenham are playing pretty average football. And you know, obviously, when I say average football, I mean like average for their standards. I feel like they've got a few gears to go through. And I think this weekend against Arsenal, it's gonna be a huge test. So I'm really keen to see what they're going to be like this weekend. But in all fairness, I think Bayern have a pretty much a more complete squad rather than Spurs. Spurs seem a little bit unsettled. Pochettino feels a little bit unsettled with his players at the moment. So I think that's going to sort of translate on the pitch. But I, I do rate Spurs as a team and especially Pochettino as a coach. But I genuinely can't see Spurs topping the group over Bayern Munich at this point. And obviously third spot, Olympiakos. Um, I can't really see um, Zveda getting through, you know, to the Europa League. But, you know, stranger things can happen and, you know, once you get a roll on or, you know, once you if, you... if you can dominate your home ground, I think that'll be a huge thing. But I feel like going to Greece, um, yeah, we all know what those Greek fans are like. So I think Olympiakos will probably easily slot for a Europa League spot. Now, Group C, this one was a little bit more difficult, you know, to pick. I've got Manchester City on top. I think a lot of... I think 99% of people are going to have Manchester City on top of the group stage. They're also one of the favourites to win, you know, the Champions League this season. So, you know, Man City have got a lot of expectations and Pep really wants to lift that, you know, that UEFA Champions League trophy. I think it would really complete him as a manager because everywhere he goes, he brings success. And, you know, this team at the moment that he's... That he's built has been an absolute dynasty. It'll go down as one of the greatest, you know, Premier League teams ever. And if he can win the Champions League, you know, with Manchester City, I can feel like that this team will go down as one of the greats. Because look, look at that team. It's just beautiful to look at on paper. And then, you know, like what Mourinho said, there's a Man City A and there's a Man City B. Like by all gods. So Man City, without a doubt, is going to finish on top. But I've also got Atalanta at the second spot to go through to the next stage of the Champions League. I feel like last season they showed a lot of poise and a lot of attacking threat going forward. I think Atalanta, you know, play really, really well as a team. I know they're not one of the greatest teams in Italy, but I feel like there's going to be a little bit of an upset on the cards. I can't really see Shakhtar or Zagreb being any better than Atalanta. I think Atalanta got the better players between Shakhtar and Zagreb. I know Shakhtar got a few good players, 
but not enough like Atalanta. And Atalanta play, you know, good football teams pretty much every week being in Serie A and obviously playing in the Ukrainian League. It's not that great. And obviously I've got Shakhtar in the third spot. You know, Zagreb, uh, they're just one of those teams that just sort of fill a spot. Sorry if there are any Zagreb supporters out there that are watching. I am very sorry. But I think Shakhtar are going to get the Europa League spot in Group C. Now, Group D is a little bit exciting to look at on paper. I've got Atletico Madrid on top. Now, you guys are probably going to think this is a little bit crazy, but boy, oh boy, Atletico Madrid look absolutely sick at the moment. Like, the way that they are playing at the moment is awesome. They're playing so fast football, and honestly, I think Atletico Madrid could even push for, you know, La Liga this season. I know that's a bit of a... A little bit of a gamble for me to say that because I know Barcelona are looking amazing as well But like I said they can challenge and I feel like they can possibly win it and honestly Atletico Madrid their squad depth is sick and I've got so many good players on that list now and Obviously if Diego Costa can get some goals in if Morata can get some goals in and if Jao Felix can just go absolutely tits up boy oh boy that team is running riots because like they can score so many goals. They've got so many players who can score goals. And the thing is, Diego Simeone sides are always so built, you know, in the back line. And he prides himself on defensive efforts and you know Trippier as well as an inclusion to Atletico Madrid is huge. So genuinely I believe that Atletico Madrid have got a sick squad. I'm really excited to see what Atletico bring in the Champions League this season. I hope they sort of go far, like honestly, like semi-finals far, because Atletico Madrid is sick and I really enjoy watching Atletico play under Simeone. So Atletico on top. So Juventus is obviously, I think the second or, I'm not sure, it's, it's one of the top three favorites to win the Champions League, but I don't know what it is about me and Atletico finishing on top and, and Juventus finishing second. Because obviously we know Juventus have got an amazing team as well, you know, going from every third of the pitch, you know, from attacking to midfield to defence. Absolutely insane. And obviously really good. Got two really good goalkeepers as well in Chesney and Buffon. So, but honestly, I feel like Juventus, I think they'll do really well in the Champions League, but I think the group stage is going to be a little bit hit and miss. I feel like... When they go to Madrid, they might drop points, and Atletico, honestly, Atletico won't drop any points at home, where I feel like Juventus might pip in a draw at home, you know, so I don't, I don't know, it's just the way that I'm thinking, I feel like maybe Juventus might drop some points in a game, and it might cost them the top spot, so not, by, by me putting Juventus in second spot doesn't mean that Juventus are shit, or Juventus are not going to do you know, very well in the Champions League. I just genuinely think Atletico Madrid are going to have a better group stage phase. So, honestly, I still think Juventus are still going to obviously do amazing in the Champions League. I just think Atletico might do something a little bit better. But Leverkusen I've got in third spot. It was actually a little bit hard to put either Mosca or Leverkusen in the third spot. But, you know, Bundesliga teams, you know, tend to do really well in the group stage to try and nick something out of nothing. But, honestly, I think Leverkusen could... I think they made the Europa League last year, honestly. I think they dropped into the Europa League. I'm not too sure. I'm probably wrong. Who knows? But Leverkusen, I can see them playing in the Europa League. So that's why I've got them. So obviously Group D, a little bit different than obviously most people will have. So Atletico on top, Juventus second. Another good group is Group E. And obviously, top of the group, we've got the European champions. Liverpool, I think they're going to go really, really far again this year. Depends on what Klopp wants to concentrate on this season. I feel like Klopp is probably sick and tired of not winning the league. He's been there for quite a few seasons. And, you know, this Liverpool team is absolutely amazing to watch. It's amazing on paper. And the squad depth is amazing. Like, obviously, they can do really well in both competitions. But I feel like Klopp might prioritise the Premier League this season. Whereas, I just feel like maybe Pep this season might prioritise winning the Champions League and put that on his CV. And like what I said before, you know, make this one of the greatest teams ever. You know, like, I just feel like maybe when you put Pep and Klopp's priorities together, I, sort, I think maybe it sort of matches, you know, what they both want. Because obviously Klopp wants to win the Prem and obviously Pep wants to win the Champions League. But obviously they want to win as many trophies as they can. I still feel like Liverpool is still going to beast it in the group stage. Like, I can't see Salzburg and Genk beating them. I can feel like maybe... 
you know, when they go away to Napoli, I think that's maybe where they might drop points because, like my brother said, and I definitely agreed with him, Liverpool going t away to Italian teams, it's just a little bit shaky. So, nonetheless, but Napoli are playing in second spot. I think anyone's going to have Liverpool and Napoli in there, whether it's going to be Napoli, Liverpool, or Liverpool, Napoli. Salzburg in third spot, can't really see them, you know, not making the Europa League spot over Genk. I know Genk is still like one of those teams that you can sort of underrate and they can fly under the radar a little bit. But uh, yeah, I think Salzburg have, you know, a decent talent pool in their team to at least finish in third spot to get into that Europa League stage. All right, now moving on to Group F. Now this is fucking crazy. I think the F stands for my fucking favorite. 100% we've got Barcelona, Dortmund, Inter and Slavia Prague. Now if you guys haven't seen <laughs> the, the video of the president or whoever went over to the Champions League draw and they panned the camera over to the fellow who was there on behalf of Slavia, I was absolutely crazy. He was like, oh my god, this is absolutely nuts. Slavia Praha to the Group F. Group F for Slavia Praha. That's quite a challenging group actually for this uh, Czech team. Barcelona, Borussia, Dortmund, Inter and uh, Slavia Praha. But it's going to bring in really good revenue anyway, but what a group this is. This is the group of death that everyone talks about. There's always one group and it's Barcelona, Dortmund and Inter. And oh my god, this one, does, this one is the most trickiest group that I had to pick. Now, Barcelona, I feel like they're going to get their shit together. They're always really good in the group stage anyway. I feel like they're going to finish on top. It's just the second spot. Now, before I do want to jump into this, I've actually picked Barcelona to win La Liga, I've picked Dortmund to win the Bundesliga, and I've picked Inter Milan to win Serie A, so it's really difficult for me to actually pick who's going to be in what, but I've picked Borussia Dortmund to finish second due to the fact that their squad is more inclined to play well together. I feel like after last season, you know, they've had a little bit more experience in the Champions League where Inter sort of dropped out. Obviously, a new coach is the huge factor here because... Antonio Conte is an absolute weapon. He is definitely one of the best managers in the world, hands down. Probably top three in my opinion. I feel like Chelsea were fucking really dumb to get rid of him. But anyway, I feel like Inter Milan are going to be a huge different team this year. I think especially with the additions of uh, Barella, Lukaku and Alexis Sanchez are going to be huge. And I just feel like they're going to do bits. They're going to put you know their bad stints behind them. I think Sanchez is going to go nuts. I don't know what it is, but I feel like... Alexis Sanchez is going to be like his Udinese days where he just tears everything up. Lukaku, we all know he's going to score heaps of goals. scored on his debut for Inter Milan anyway. And I just genuinely think Antonio Conte's game plan is fucking awesome. But I had to put someone in third. One of the teams can't go through. I picked Inter Milan to finish third just due to the fact that I feel like... You know, it might take a little bit of time for Inter Milan to get their game plan, you know, up to scratch with Conte's game plan. So I think that's the only, you know, negative downside to, you know, Inter Milan at the moment, that it might take a little bit of time. But who knows? Chelsea played amazing under Conte in the first year, but I know Conte is really good at winning the league, not, you know, additional competitions like the Champions League. But I could be wrong. It was the hardest decision. And obviously, Slavia is obviously in fourth spot. It's a little bit disappointing for them, but like I said, they're going to bring in a lot of revenue and their fans are going to go mental either or. So I think they're just going to be enjoying the time anyway. So let me know what you guys think with this one because this one's really hard. I think a lot of people can pick and choose where who's going to you know finish where. It's a little bit difficult. So yeah, let me know. Now moving on to Group G. Now this one was a little bit difficult for me as well because I feel like all four teams in this group are actually really similar in stature. So we've got Leon finishing on top. I feel like Leon after last season, you know, in the Champions League, I feel like they did half decent. And I think Memphis Depay is huge to them going forward, especially for kicking goals. Obviously, Nabil Fakir gone, but they've still got a lot of good depth. I know they've lost in Dombele as well. But in all fairness, I feel like Leon are probably one of the better teams there. Um, Leipzig are pretty good, I, I would, it's fair to say. I know Bundesliga, some Bundesliga teams show up when they want to show up, but I think Leipzig also rely a lot on Timo Werner as well. So, so obviously, it's just basically going to be the battle of Memphis Depay versus Timo Werner. So um, I've got Benfica in third. I just obviously honestly I don't know too much about Benfica like I know them as a team but I don't know how well they play and everything and especially with losing Jao Felix as well which is a is a huge loss especially to that team but who knows I could be wrong this this whole group can be anywhere like Zenit could finish up there but I don't want Zenit to finish 
Anywhere, honestly, like if there are any Zenit fans out there, um, it's pro probably not all of you, but like that whole Malcolm scenario, I don't know if that was real, but fuck me, man, like I've lost so much respect for Zenit ever since that came out. If that was actually true, fuck me, man, this racism shit's gotta stop, bro. Like, I don't understand. Like, I always put my. I, I, I try to put my head in a racist head, but I, I don't. I can't get it, honestly. But I'm not even going to talk about that because that's just, I don't want to give that shit a time of day. But obviously, Leon and Leipzig going through to the knockouts, and then also I have Benfica going through to the Europa League once again. Group H is the last group, and that is my boys, Chelsea. Just touched my heart, but even though I've got a Juventus kit on right now, but obviously, Chelsea is my team. And I feel like this group is also another group that is really well rounded. I feel like all these teams are pretty much in a rebuilding stage at the moment, but I've put Chelsea on top because I feel I think they've got the better squad to compete with. And then I've also got Ajax in second spot. I know a lot of people are probably going to say Ajax should be top, but they lost a lot of good players. And obviously they've still got Ziyech and Van der Beek and Tadic in there, but I feel like you know losing De Lit and losing De Jong is absolutely huge. I just I just can't see Ajax doing the most amazing thing is what they did last season, but honestly, I just genuinely believe that Chelsea's depth is still good enough to withstand both competitions. And I feel like this will be an opportunity for Chelsea to give some other players a good run. I'm probably going to miss Zappa Costa in the, you know, for competitions like this because, you know, he is... I just feel like Zappa Costa is actually a decent player, but you never know. Before, you know, the, the group stage is out, uh, Reese James should come back. So, the more time that Chelsea play, the more time they're going to get their players back. Obviously, with Loftus-Cheek, Rudiger, you know, Hudson-Odoi and Reese James, there's a number of players. Uh, look, at those, look at those players that are just walking starters. So, Chelsea on top, Ajax in second, I've got Valencia in third and Lille in fourth. I don't really, I can't really rate Lille at the moment. I feel like French league teams are a little bit up and down and especially when you've got a team like PSG and then basically all the other teams below them are just like trying to just compete for second spot. So it's a bit shit like that. That's why I don't really pay much attention to the French League. They produce some absolutely banging players. Obviously some of the goals that some players score and what some of the players turn into are fucking crazy, but the French League just isn't as competitive as, you know, what it's maybe perceived to be. But nonetheless, guys, let me know in the comment section below who you guys think will be going through to the group stage um, that I've sort of missed out. I know there's probably some debate on, you know, especially with Atletico topping a group and then also Chelsea topping a group and like especially with that with Group F, that's just crazy with Inter, Dortmund and Barcelona, that's a huge group. But I'm really excited for the Champions League this season, especially because Chelsea are finally back in the competition. Who knows? We could just drop back out and go into the Europe into the Europa League, but I really hope not. But honestly guys, Champions League is awesome. It just produces some of the greatest moments in football history and I'm really excited to see what players shine on the stage. So but nonetheless guys, if you have enjoyed today's video, please give it a like, please do subscribe and I shall see you guys on the next video. Peace out.